can you uh, tell me what you learned hanging out with a herd of elephants? What, yeah. Well, what should uh, what do people not understand about elephants? That's that's beautiful to you. That's interesting to you. First of all, I think that elephants should have government representation as like a subset of society. Like actually, they they have intelligence. They are so intelligent. And and when you look at an elephant, so there's this question that keeps coming up of you know are we are we smart enough to know how smart animals are? Can can we can we interpret the intelligence that we're seeing? And I've 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 I lived with a semi wild herd of elephants in India for a while, and some of the things that I saw like changed how I view reality. To be honest with you, because you know you watch a, a matriarch of an elephant herd walk up to someone that none of us knew was pregnant, and her trunk goes to her stomach, and then she calls all the other ones over, and they're interested in this little human that that they know that there's something in there, mm -hmm. and they're and they're all conversing about it, and you go whoa. Or that every morning we'd wake up and the elephants didn't want the stream water, they didn't want the lake water, they didn't want puddles, they wanted the water from our well. Mm -hmm. We had like a stone well, you know, like a traditional. And every morning we had to like run out of bed because all the elephants were gonna come and they were gonna rip the bucket off and destroy everything, but they wanted that nice, cold, clean water. And so it was like caring for elephants that were wild, that were sometimes getting shot at by farmers because if they went to try and rob some bananas, so these are sort of like delinquent elephants that were half wild and the forest department was thinking about, you know, getting rid of them, which whatever that meant. And uh, I made really good friends with this one elephant and his name was Dharma. And uh, Dharma had the, had the, this stuff doesn't, this is, it's hard to write the book I'm writing right now because none of it sounds real. <laughs> he, he grew up around people because he was a tuskless male. So he couldn't hang out with the females because he was a grown up male and he couldn't hang out with the males, the bulls, because he couldn't defend himself when they roughhoused and everything. So Dharma would be like wandering around the forest, not knowing who to hang out with. And so like there was one night there was a tiger calling and we just heard, <clears throat> you could hear it echoing over the hills. And what does Dharma do? 2 a.m. We hear Dharma show up and he's same thing. He starts throwing a tantrum. He starts pulling shit over. He starts, takes a chair, throws it. Mm -hmm. We had bananas in the truck. Dharma walks up to the truck. It's like a Jeep. He walks up to the Jeep, smells it. He looks at me and he's like, you gonna get out of bed? I'm like, no, I'm not gonna get out of bed. I was like, Dharma, you're a grown ass elephant. <laughs> the tiger does his thing again. And he's like, I need bananas to feel better. Yeah. Pushes the truck up on two, two wheels. Oh, wow. Looks at me. Is this how you want it to be? <laughs> and so I'm up, I'm up. Yeah. And I go and I'm like, please, 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 Dharma, give me I'm rubbing his face. And he's like, he puts it down. He's like, all right, well then, then Bananas. hit me. I didn't do it. So he lifts it up again. And so in the end, there was no way for me to outsmart the elephant. He wins. Yeah. There was nothing I could do. And so a lot of my job was taking him out into the forest and, and you know, spending a little bit of time with him. I have this beautiful, one time I set up the tripod and I went and I was just, I was just journaling and he would come and he would just like play with my hair and he'd be like, Hey, what's up? You know, and he just, he wanted someone to to interact with on an emotional level. And, you know, when you think about elephants in terms of the fact that, you know, people go, oh, you know, they they use medication to induce labor. It's like, yeah, that's not that surprising. They 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 hold the bones of the dead. It's like, yeah, they have the best smell of pretty much any animal. That's also not surprising. They probably know exactly who that was, that bone. But they can navigate to water holes and communicate in ways that we cannot really figure out. And so when you hear about people measuring at elephant intelligence, you'll hear about scientists being like, oh, well, we gave it a, you know, a bucket with a hole in it. And then it had like a key and there was a rope. And you're like, bro, this is all human stuff. Yeah. Can you go walking with them for three weeks in the wild and watch how they deal with the problems that they encounter in the forest? And so elephants have become, especially recently with the work that's been going, that I've been doing in Africa with vet paw, um, I've just become so fascinated with elephants and uh, you know, elephants, the elephant, the African elephant population right now is down at 2% of what it was a few hundred years ago. We're really, we're really putting them on the brink of, you know, there's, there's some elephants that are being born tuskless because we've, poaching has taken down the great tuskers to the point where now it's, it's actually beneficial for some elephants to not have tusks because they won't have humans, but that's, that's like we've created deformed elephants. And so like now I'm gotten very concerned with 
issues of and, elephants. And tusks are fundamental to the interaction between elephants. Absolutely. I mean, when males compete with each other, but also elephants use their tusks, you know, like they'll they'll break a branch and they'll be like, this is a good branch. I'm going to yeah. eat the hell out of this. And they'll like hang it on their tusk and they'll like grab a bunch of other stuff. They'll like hold it, mm -hmm. um, you know, ripping a tree up out of the ground. I just watched it two weeks ago as, as, as watching an elephant, he got down on his knees and stuck his, his tusk into the ground and like leveraged up. He like Archimedes to this root out of the ground and then was like, that's a sweet root. And then when he left, I went and I tasted the root and it was like sweet ginger. And I was like, I have no idea what this is, but he knew it was good. Do they use tusks for sexual selection, like to impress the ladies or no? It's certainly involved in how, who, who has mating rights. Oh, who wins in the Who wins? I mean, if you got the big tusks, and there are elephants out there like the mammoth big tuskers that have tusks down to the ground, like yeah. huge. And when you see them, it's like seeing something unique on earth, unique in history, because we're at a point where we might lose those. There are only a few of them left. And, and they're so prized by hunters. Yeah, it's interesting because I, I forget what the actual conclusion on that is, because there's some studies of the use of, the value of beauty in evolution, like mm. birds. Yeah. and peacocks and so on, that there's no actual value to it, but it plays a role in, in uh, sexual selection. Meaning value, like, it's much easier to understand competition. Like a tusk helps you defeat sure. the competitor. It's a tool. But I, I bet you there's a component to the tusk where the ladies go, God damn, that's a nice <laughs> <laughs> Like there's a visual, beautiful component. Maybe not, I don't know. But what if what if beauty though, as we're defining it though, is 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 symmetry and the the absence of yellow spots on your face sure. and and healthy looking hair and so like yeah. i think to us beauty is sexually appealing traits yeah. that look good to mate with and so so that that 19 year old with uh marissa well, everybody in the world would swipe left on that yeah <laughs> the least sexually yeah, desirable object in the universe